Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's 5th grade, Module 5, Lesson 4. I'm going to start off by going over the ICANN objective. It says, I can find the volume of a right rectangular prism using the area of the base and the height. The learning objective is to find the volume of a right rectangular prism. Prior learning from third grade says students expressed areas in square units such as square meters, square inches, and square feet. From fourth grade, students applied the area formula for a rectangle. All right, so moving on to page 107, we're going to start with the spark your learning. As a word problem that reads, for his junior engineering club, Miguel is designing a box in the shape of a right rectangular prism that can hold exactly 12 one inch number cubes with no extra space. So what are the dimensions and volume of a box Miguel can design? Justify your reasoning. Okay, so I know that if there's 12 one inch number cubes, that my volume is gonna be 12. So we wanna find different dimensions in which that can work. And we did do that a couple lessons back, just fi figuring out all those different configurations of how to have the exact same volume, okay? And the one I personally always like to start off with is the easiest one that comes to mind. So if it's 12 high, then the length and the width are just gonna be one. So 12 by one by one would still give me a volume of 12. Now, if I were to change one of those ones and just move down and make it two, how would that affect the 12? So if I kept this one and I changed this to two, then my number would need to be six because six times two times one is 12. And if I had 12 high and now I'm going to have the length be two, that means I'm going to take half of my 12 and put them next to each other. So now they're only six high. All right, if I wanted to move one step further and I wanted three rows, so now I'm taking my 12 and now I want three rows. So how many tall would it be if I had three rows? If I had 12 to begin with and I have three rows, now I would have four blocks high. So four times three times one is still 12. Okay, and there's one more that I could think of. Instead of just having one long, what if I had it two by two? So the width is two and the length is two, so the base is four. So what if I had two by two? How tall would they be now? If I had a base of two by two, then the height would have to be three. So three times two times two is also still 12. So those are my different dimensions, my different configurations for having the same volume of 12 using those blocks. All right, so moving to page one, 108, the build your understanding, we're going to start with number one. It says, Naomi works at a health food company. She needs to stack one inch protein cubes into a box as shown with no extra space. Okay, so I'm going to have you do two questions at a time working through this, and then I'm going to go over those two, and then I'm going to give you the next two. All right, so just looking at A and B, A says, what is the area of the base of the box? So you're going to have to use these little brown cubes and figure out the base of the box. You can use the brown cubes, or if you look down inside the box, they're red with little blue outlines that can also be used as the base of the box. Whichever one you want to look at and try to figure out, both are going to be the same answer. And B, what is the volume of one layer of cubes and explain how you know. All right, so I'm just going to have you do A and B. I'm going to have you hit pause here and go ahead and solve those. All right, coming back. So for A, what is the area of the base of the box? I'm going to go ahead and use the red. So my length here, as it shows, is four, and my width here is two. So I know if my length and my width are four and two, four times two is eight. So the, the base of my box is going to be eight. The tricky thing here is what is the area, right? When I'm finding area, there is no height, right? It's just length times width. It's 2D. There's only two dimensions that I'm looking at. So in this one, it's going to be eight and the, um, unit here is in inches. So I'm going to do eight 
inches and it's going to be squared. There's a two in the exponent because there's only two dimensions that I'm looking at, the length and the width. Now that changes a little bit when we move into B. And now it says, what is the volume for one layer of cubes? Explain how you know. All right. So if you also put eight, you are correct. However, it changes slightly. So in the cubes, I do have four and I do still have two here, but I also have another dimension of one as the height. So now I'm looking at three different dimensions here. So the volume is going to be eight. It's still inches, but now it's going to be cubed. There's going to be a three up in the exponent because there's three different dimensions that I'm looking at when I'm looking at volume. Okay, and explain how you know, you can just kind of talk about the three different parts that you're looking at to find the volume. All right, so now let's um, jump ahead to C and D and see what those questions are talking about. So in C, it says, how is the volume of the prism, prism different from the area of the base it is sitting on? Okay, and we did just kind of explain that a little bit. And D, as each layer is added on top of the base layer, how does the volume change? Okay, so I just want you to do C and D for right now. Go ahead and hit pause here. All right, let's go ahead and solve C and D. So for C, how is the volume of the prism different from the area of the base it is sitting on? Well, we know that volume has height, right? Volume has height to where the area that it was sitting on is flat. There is no height. It's just the length and the width. So what I'm going to write is volume has height. All right. And then for D, as each layer is added on top of the base layer, how does the volume change? Okay. Remember if our base line was eight and we keep adding layers as we increase our height, it's going to increase by that base number every time. So I have eight to begin with. When I add another layer, it's another eight and then another eight and then another eight. Okay. So when I'm adding a layer, how does the volume change? It increases by eight each layer. Okay. So what I'm going to say is just increase increase by eight. All right, now we're going to look ahead to E and F as our last questions for this lesson. So for E, it says complete the table to find the volume of Naomi's box. How is the volume related to the height? Okay, so it gives you the height and layers. It gives you layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five. Okay, you need to find what the volume is at each layer. And then for F, what is the volume of Naomi's box? So when it's completely full, what is the total volume at the very end? All right, so go ahead and solve those two. Go ahead and click pause here. All right, let's come back and solve these last two. So for E, we know in one layer there are eight. In the second layer, there's going to be another eight. So eight plus eight, or eight times two, is 16. Now, instead of keeping doing a repeated addition, what's easier is just to go ahead and multiply. So what I'm going to do is 8 times 3, I know is 24. 8 times 4 is 32. And 8 times 5 is 40. All right. So how is the volume related to the height? Well, it increases by 8 each time which is very similar to D. So I'm going to put the same thing. So increase by eight each layer. All right, and then F, what is the volume of Naomi's box? Remember, you have to have your units for this to be correct. Don't just be writing the number. So the volume of the box right? If there's five layers, we know that that number up in E was 40. So if you put 40, you're almost correct. You want 40 inches because that's our unit. And because we're finding volume, it's length times and height, which means that 
um, exponent up in the top is going to be a three. And you would say it as 40 inches cubed or 40 cubic inches. Either one works. All right, that is it for this lesson. Go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems, and I will see you back for Module 5, Lesson 5.